you haven't been in a relationship in a long time. Girl, it's been 84 fucking years since I've been in a relationship. I don't even remember what the touch of a man was like anymore. It's been many, many moons. There are cobwebs growing down there. <laughs> Before we get into this video, I want to take a moment to talk about all the things I'm wearing today. The first thing is this t-shirt right here. This t-shirt was made by Inquilary. She did a really funny video where she turned booktuber tweets into t-shirts. So she did a tweet by Emma and by Caleb from Insane Reader and then also my tweet. I made this quite a while ago back when there was like a little bit of drama between the small booktube community and guru gossip. It was obviously a hot mess on Twitter. but what else is new on book Twitter and I wrote a tweet which is something I do every time there is a scandal or controversy I always write some stupid fucking tweet that makes fun of the situation and I wrote my kink is a booktube drama along with a few other things that I don't quite remember because I always write a lot of crap but I'll just put it over here Victoria took the time to go ahead and paint out the words of my tweet onto a shirt and she was kind enough to also send the shirt to to me as well. I think this is like the closest thing I'll ever get to merch, but thank you, Victoria. The second thing that I want to talk about are the glasses I'm wearing. I got three new pairs of glasses recently from Glasses USA because they wanted me to promote their brand, and I am legit surprised that I actually do not look like crap wearing them. Coincidentally, I also got one of the submissions for my assumptions video saying, your glasses are a fashion choice. So I'll just say straight up, the answer is false. They are a necessity because I am fucking blind as a bat. Literally, when they contacted me for a sponsorship and they asked me to send them my prescription, they replied back to me saying, um, are, are you sure this is like the right prescription? Because these numbers are unusually high. And I was like, no, I'm literally blind. So yes, that's pretty accurate. I do not wear glasses as a fashion choice or to look like a hipster or whatever. It's literally just so that I can survive out in the real world. If I don't have glasses, I'm basically dead. Natural selection should have wiped me out a long time ago, but thanks to Glasses USA, here I am surviving. So I wanna talk about the three glasses that I got to request from their site. The one that I'm wearing right now for this video is Weston Brown. This is basically a well rounded glasses that has like a tortoise hue to it. The glasses that I commonly wear are pretty much just all black, but I wanted to kind of take this opportunity to play around more with colors and especially clear frames, which are the two other glasses that I requested. This one is called a Toto Piero, and this is in the black slash clear color. Like there's a little bit of black here, but then for the most part it's clear. And I actually quite like them. I feel like you can actually see my eye makeup from here, but maybe that's also bad because then you'll see how terrible I am at makeup. I don't know, but for now, I actually really like them. However, I do think my favorite is the pink version. This is the Muse Marie. These are also round glasses that have a clear and barely pink slash transparent look to them. And I really like these. I actually think they kind of match with um, this pink text. If you're interested in any of these designs, I will have the products linked in my description. And all these glasses were under $100, but I did see a lot of them were around $50, which is a really good deal. I am pleasantly surprised at how affordable these glasses are. And if you want to get even more of a good deal, then you can also use my promo link in the description to get a discount. And also another thing that I like about them is that they have free shipping. I basically don't order anything online unless it has free shipping. And Glasses USA does have free shipping, so thank God for that. Now on to the rest of the video. I asked on YouTube for you to submit your assumptions about me. I finally hopped on the bandwagon Actually, I'm pretty late to the bandwagon. The bandwagon has already left, but I wanted to do this kind of video because I have been on booktube for a year now. I feel like I have been very upfront with everything, both with my opinions on books and my personal life. It was interesting to see uh, <laughs> the kind of submissions that you guys wrote. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you whether they are true or false. You always say sorry and thank you at the workplace, but never on the streets unless it's a bad day on your part. But in general, I try not to say sorry too much at the workplace because I think that if you're a woman and you tend to say sorry a lot, it automatically puts you in a more submissive position. So don't say sorry if 
it's generally not your fault. Like there are a lot of days where I am an hour late to work and I miss a meeting and that's when I have to say sorry. I'm sorry for being late. It was not because I had any emergency. It was just because of who I am as a person. Oh, and I always say thank you at the workplace because I think everybody needs to be acknowledged for their work no matter what their role is. I assume that you read everything very critically and that you find it hard not to analyze every little thing in a book. I would say it's more a selective analysis because I don't analyze everything. I usually gloss over world building, but when it comes to character development and relationship development, those are things that I pay attention to the most because that's what I care about the most. I assume you curse in your videos because you get more views due to people thinking it's funny. Yes and no. I do curse naturally in my day-to-day -day life, but I don't feel inclined to hide that part because I know people will find it funny anyway, and I don't really have anyone to impress, so it doesn't matter. You're naturally a huge movie crier, but not if you're watching with other people. Basically, I feel like you're emotionally constipated, but also very sensitive. I cry very easily in movies. I cried watching Tangled in that one scene where he says, you are my new dream. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I also cried watching The Simpsons movie in the one scene where she tapes over the tape. Again, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I think it's because in my real life, I compartmentalize so much of my emotions and I also emotionally shut myself off from relationships. And then when I see it flourishing or disintegrating in a fictional setting, that's when I project myself onto there and I really feel it. The most recent time that I've cried was actually last night as of filming this because I was watching when they see us on Netflix and that shit was so fucking devastating. It's basically about five boys that were at Central Park and were accused of rape. They were basically coerced into confessing for a crime that they did not commit. And so they ended up going to prison when they were 14, 15, 16. The fifth kid that was arrested, he wasn't even at the park. He just decided to go to the police station with his friend just to be a good friend for him. But he ended up being roped into it anyway. And he got the worst circumstances out of all of them because as well, the rest of them went to juvie, he went to adult prison and he was beaten up by the other adult prisoners. And it was so awful to see all those scenes, but somehow I did not cry in any of those gruesome scenes until I got to this one part where he was in solitary confinement and he was hallucinating back to when he was a teenager and having a happy life with his girlfriend in an amusement park and they were just playing and laughing and having a good time and that fucking broke me for some reason. I just started crying when I saw the childhood that he lost and then I watched the interviews with the actual people and I was crying throughout the whole thing as well. Basically, I'm a huge crybaby even when it comes to serious topics like when they see us and also when it comes to animated movies like Tangled and The Simpsons. You insult yourself a lot but in reality, you think highly of yourself because of how successful you've become in your life. I think it's possible to both be proud of yourself but also be self-loathing. It really depends sometimes. Like I would say I think when I went to Miami shoot I was kind of riding off of that high of feeling successful and invigorated. Then this past month I have felt the opposite where I constantly feel like I'm not being productive enough or I'm not doing as much as I should be. I I tend to swing back and forth between the pendulum of feeling like I got my shit together and then also feeling like my life is in shambles. I do think that when I look at myself on paper and when I compare myself to other people around my age, technically speaking, I do know that I am more successful than the average person, but it's very hard for me to I guess feel that way or feel proud or accomplished of it. And I think it's because I am not necessarily comparing myself to other people. I'm comparing myself to whatever invisible standard that I have put upon myself. And I also do think that a lot of it is like depression and imposter syndrome. So it really varies. It depends on the day. It depends on my mood. You now own more than 10 books. This is true because you bitches keep on sending me books, even though I tell you that I don't care about owning books. But I keep it anyway because you do it out of the kindness of your hearts and now I gotta keep this shit for sentimentality reasons. At some point, I will make an updated bookshelf tour. I don't really have a bookshelf. There are literally just books that are stacked on my floor. You are really pissed at 
the lack of really good booktube drama this year, and that booktube drama is one reason you joined in the first place. I actually feel like there was a lot of booktube drama. If you are on book Twitter, there's basically stupid shit going on every fucking week. The only drama or scandal that I actually enjoy is Soapgate. I talked about it in my previous video, and I have a whole video dedicated- Oh shit! It was like my camera knew that I was going to talk about soap dick and they were like, I'm out of this conversation. So that's the kind of drama that I would want more of, not any of the race wink that we've had. It wasn't like hurting or oppressing anybody. It was just something super ridiculous that everyone kind of united together to laugh at how ridiculous it was. I got a lot of assumptions about me drinking coffee or me not drinking coffee or me drinking tea versus other types of beverages. The answer to all of them is that it is false. I don't drink coffee or tea or juice or boba or any of those things. All I do is drink water. As you guys know, I am very cheap, so I personally do not think it's worth it for me to spend three bucks on coffee or tea or boba every day. I'm more of a food person anyway, so if I were to spend money on things to sustain myself, it would be food. You're probably unaware of just how many people idolize you, but you also absolutely hate being put on a pedestal. I do think I am aware of that because I get a lot of comments about it. I I don't hate or love it. I do think that it's just interesting. For me, being a booktuber or YouTuber in general has made me really see what fan culture is like and how we often put other people that we don't know on a pedestal. I don't hate it because I do think that I struggle with my self-image a lot and maybe the extremes of me being self-loathing and then other people idolizing me can cancel each other out and I can just view myself as a normal person. That's how logic works, right? We went to the same college at the same time. My assumption is you liked it here, but didn't care about being an ag or going to school events. I went to UC Davis, which is primarily known as an agricultural school. I did not care about being in that particular school. I just picked it because I don't know. I There was no reason for why I picked that school. It just seemed like a good one, but I didn't even know what I wanted to do with my life. When it comes to the school specifically and our education system, it was very lacking when it comes to the design major and just the chancellor also was like Linda. I, I forget what the fuck her name was, but I remember there was like this whole protest with her, there were these students that were protesting about, I think, rising tuition costs, and there were a group of police officers that ended up pepper spraying them. So it was a huge scandal, and we found out that the chancellor paid a group of people to wipe out the Google search results, which is very ironic because after that was discovered, the incident became even more of a popular thing. And then she ended up having to step down, but I don't think the new chancellor is like any better either. So basically, the university system is quite corrupt. I also do not think that me going to university really impacted how I am as a designer. All the stuff that I do now as a designer, I had to learn that on my own outside of classes. So basically, I don't think school was very useful for me. It was only useful in the sense that it was like a character builder because I got to meet my college friends that I still talk to today and that I still, you know, hang out with whenever I fly back home. I also had my first relationship there, which was emotionally abusive, but I do think that it was a character builder for me to learn to be more independent and self-sufficient without relying on another man's affections. I did enjoy my experiences overall because it was part of how I grew as a person. And I think if I had gone to a different university, I probably would not be here today. You actually own a bunch of shit, but you pretend to be a minimalist to be considered edgy and weird and not like other girls. This is false. However, I question whether minimalism is considered edgy or weird. I actually do think that it's more trendy now and a lot of people are into it. I became more of a minimalist because I have the psychological fear of spending too much money because of the way that I grew up with my parents who were gambling addicts. And I talk more about it in a future video where I talk about how I was able to pay off all my student loans in three years. So I'll go more in depth about that. But to answer your assumption, that is false. <laughs> I am generally a minimalist. However, it's not because it's trying to be trendy. It's literally just because I'm psychologically fucked up. I will say though that at least in the US, I noticed that people who have adapted minimalism often seem to do it because it 
seems to show that they are enlightened or to show that they have a specific aesthetic. I do think that when you can be a minimalist, that means that you are well off in your life to get rid of things in the first place. Because when you come from a lower class family, I think it is ingrained for you to try to keep the things that you have because you don't know when you're gonna lose it or if you won't be able to afford getting a new one. I will say that for my case, it is definitely not for aesthetic because my room is literally just an ugly ass bed in the middle of the room and that's it. I would like for it to be aesthetic though, so maybe I can finally transition from minimalism out of necessity and desperation to minimalism as aesthetic and privilege. Hopefully, that's the goal. There were a lot of people who assumed that I like cats. That is false. I do not like cats at all. I mean, if a cat is in the room, I'll pet them and I'll like, you know, try to entertain myself with them, but I don't care for them either way. I am so much more of a dog person. I used to foster dogs when I lived on my own and I don't mind getting hair from those dogs. I do mind getting hair from cats. Basically, I have a double standard because if anything happens to a dog, I am just so devastated by that. That because I love dogs so much. But if anything happens to the cat, I'm just like, eh, it's a fucking cat. There were some assumptions that assumed that I am incredibly rich and incredibly well off. I do think that I live comfortably and I do have a level of privilege. I recently paid off all of my student loans, so now I am trying to build from scratch. I am currently working on building an emergency fund, and then after I'm done with my emergency fund, I am gonna try to start building up money for early retirement, hopefully. So I don't think I'm there yet, but I am trying to be. I think you're incredibly smart, like super high IQ, which is not really an assumption because it's super obvious. I would say no, I do not have a high IQ. I think that I lack a lot of common sense when it comes to a lot of things. For example, I am very, very bad at math and science and history and pretty much any subject in school except for English. I don't think I'm super smart. I think I just know how to BS certain things to maybe appear that I am smart. And ultimately, that's how you get by through life. You're secretly a book hoarder and have a personal library, but it's all the copies of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom you've ever encountered and ruined with tear stains. No comment. I assume you're a part of the LGBTQ plus community and that caused problems with your family. That is false. I am unfortunately very straight. Honestly, that's how you really know that sexuality is not a choice because I would never fucking choose to be attracted to men. However, my mom hates this haircut because she says that I look like a lesbian and that guys won't be attracted to me, which if anything reinforces why I need to keep this haircut. You are less likely to read or watch something that's hyped because you're subconsciously trying to be hipster. That is false because I am more likely to read or watch something when it is hyped. I read Six of Crows because it was hyped up so much on booktube and I'm so glad that I did because now it is my favorite series of all time. I assume that you didn't try that hard in school but still got good grades because you're smart. This is half true. I did not try that hard in school and that is the length of how true it was. <laughs> I got worse grades as I continued school. It pretty much went from A's to B's to C's. I never passed calculus. I didn't even finish the exams. I just stared at the fucking paper and I was like, there's no way I'm gonna get this. I turned in a blank page and then I dropped out of that major. The only subject that I really excelled in was English. Any class that required you to write essays, I was able to get through them pretty easily. I excel at bullshitting. That's how I've gotten through life. Oh my fucking god, I literally just dropped my camera once again and I continued filming because I thought it was still filming, but I guess when the camera dropped, it stopped filming. I'm gonna just try to blast through the rest of the assumptions real quick because ain't nobody got time for this and I already hate this video. So the next assumption is I assume you hate political correctness. I would say I'm in the middle when it comes to that because I do think that people who tend to complain about political correctness tend to be assholes because they just want to get away with being assholes and they don't like being called out on their shit or they have an uncreative sense of humor where they feel like they have to rely on being racist or sexist or saying something 
some edgy joke in order to be funny. But on the other hand, I do think there is another extreme where you can just be so overly politically correct where it feels like performative activism. I think a lot of people try so hard to appear woke or to appear like an ally or to appear enlightened or morally better than other people where they actually speak louder than the groups of people that they're trying to defend. For example, there is a very small minority of people who consider Six of Crows to be problematic. One of the main reasons is that one of the characters in the book has to disguise himself as an Asian character, and so they consider this to be yellowface. And I do think that this is technically true. It is yellowface, and I do think that Lee Bardugo could have done a better job at just avoiding that kind of question in the first place, because it is a good story, and I would hate for this slip up to make people cancel the entire book. And what I've noticed is that the very small number of people who do consider it to be problematic and actually have an issue with it are not actually Asian. They're acting like it's super offensive to Asians when they're not even Asian themselves. I have met a lot of other Asian readers who do love Six of Crows and they don't have a problem with this, including me. It's one of those things where I can understand why it's considered problematic and yellowface, but I would rather hear about that from an actual Asian person rather than someone who is trying super hard to be woke and to cancel something because internet activism is apparently a personality trait. So there are extremes to both sides. And I think at the end of the day, just don't be an asshole, obviously, but also use common sense. I assume you're secretly writing your own book, which is coming out soon. It's in a fantasy genre and has much diversity in it. And the protagonist is this badass character named Ellie. Also, I assume you love reading fanfic. I used to read and actually write fan fiction back when I was in middle school and high school. I don't really have time for that anymore. I would like to publish my own book soon, and I did talk about this in a previous video. I wrote the first draft of a fantasy book a couple years ago, and I would love to return to it and make a second draft out of it. It is a fantasy genre. I guess you would consider it diverse, but for me, I don't really aim to write a book that is diverse. Like, that's not my goal here. My goal is to just write a story. Diversity is just something that happens to be in there, but it's not the whole point of it. There's no character in the book named Ellie, but I can name the younger sister of the main character, Ellie, just for you. To this day, you still cry about Crooked Kingdom. No comment. I assume that when writing your own books, you're the type of person who outlines because you always need structure before putting more detail in your book. That is true. It's easy to get writer's block and to run of ideas, but if you have an outline beforehand, it makes it a lot easier to just use that as a guiding path. For me, when I revisit my novel, I plan on reading through my first draft that I wrote a long time ago, and then I plan on vomiting after I read my old writing, and then I plan on making an outline based on the first draft with a few changes that will hopefully fix the plot and avoid any plot holes. So we'll see. I assume that your roommate low-key knows that you're a YouTuber and won't tell that she knows so you won't be awkward. I really fucking hope not. I assume that you were an overachiever back in high school but slowly didn't care as college kicks in. That is false because I never cared at all. You don't want to have kids. That is true. I do not care for kids. I basically feel about kids the same way as I feel about cats. I don't hate them. I don't love them. I just don't see the point of them and I would never have one. The closest thing I would have to a kid is a dog. And from my experience, dogs are way more well-behaved and cuter than kids. Your type of man is Cass Brecker. That is absolutely false because first of all, I would never date a virgin, okay? And we all know that he is a virgin. Also would never date an angsty dude that is just not the kind of person that I want to emotionally commit myself to. My ideal type of guy to date would actually be Wolf from the Lunar Chronicles because he is a gentle giant. Physically, he is a super buff, strong, traditionally masculine dude, but on the inside, he is a total softy, and that's the type of shit that I'm into. As opposed to Kaz, who is basically some angsty, stick-looking boy who probably wears Hot Topic clothes. You don't like being attached to people. That is true. I feel like I tend to emotionally shut myself off from people, and I feel like that has perhaps been a surviving mechanism for me because I don't want to get to the point where I rely my happiness on other people because I found other people to be just unreliable. You actually like fashion, but you're just too lazy to put the effort. 
Fucking calling me out. This is the truest statement that I have ever received for this video. I would like to look nice and dress cute every now and then, but I'm just so lazy and I feel like I have nobody to impress anyway. And it's just a lot of work. I only try to look cute and be fashionable when I'm going on a trip, but when it comes to my day to day life, I'm just wearing my PJs or just a black shirt and that's pretty much it. I assume that you don't have a favorite color. My favorite color is actually black. My assumption is that you aren't religious, but you're open-minded. That is true. I th definitely think that you can have whatever religion that you have. I personally would never get into it. I feel like I've always been an atheist and I've never believed in any higher being. But at the same time, I do think that religion is a good way for people to have a set of values and have some kind of guidance in their life. And if anything, I do envy how religious people have that to kind of fall back on. If you believe in a higher being that is looking out after you, then when you are struggling with something in your life, you know that you're not alone and and that things will still be okay. On the other hand, if you're an atheist like me and you do go through some pretty bad shit, you're pretty much fucked because you know that you're on your own. I do envy how people have that net to fall back on, but it's something that I can't have even if I wanted to. I just cannot believe in it. But the nicest people that I have met throughout my life have been very devout people. As much as there are assholes who are religious, there are also assholes who are atheists as well. A few of the boys you met in school and or college had a crush on you and some even confessed to you. I mm, I don't really know for college and high school, but I do know that in elementary and middle school, I did have, you know, some boys that did have a crush on me, and that was something that I used to be so fucking annoyed by. Like, I hated it whenever a boy had a crush on me that I would bully them severely so that they wouldn't like me anymore. That's pretty much the number one tactic to get a guy to not like you because obviously, if you say no or if you say you're not interested, that doesn't actually stop them. So you have to physically punch them in the face, which is what I did. There was a guy in my middle school who always used to follow me around and that was very annoying to me. So I punched him in the middle of class. For me, that was just the easy easiest way to nip it in the bud and then not have to deal with him anymore because he never talked to me again after that. I feel like you hate Hawaiian pizza. I will say that I hate ham on pizza, but I'm one of those bitches who like pineapple on pizza. You seem really chill but are constantly freaking out inside your head. I feel like that's how I am at work. Like on the outside, I try to be calm and pleasant and people tell me to get something done for this project that's due in a few hours and I'm like, okay, sure. But on the inside, I'm just internally screaming. Like I'm gonna put a meme of that one kid, I think his name is Gavin, who's just screaming in silence. And that's basically how I feel on the inside daily. You are not blunt or honestly savage with people you don't know, but only with your friends. I would hope that is the case, but I do feel like I have been blunt with people who are not my friends. I remember last week I was just walking across the office at work and then one of my coworkers who I hadn't seen in a while because we sit at opposite rooms said, very nicely, hey Cindy, and then my automatic reaction was just, what? There was no malicious intent with it at all, I just automatically said, what? And then everyone in the room was just like, you are a Slytherin. I have never read Harry Potter, but I'm pretty sure I'm a Slytherin. You think tattoos are dumb. Well, I guess in that case, I am dumb. You are a Libra, but can't balance everything in life fucking calling me out. <laughs> you don't have a gay bone in your body, even though everyone thinks you do. That is absolutely true, and I am absolutely sorry. Listen, if I could fucking change the way that I am, then I would, but I can't help the way that I was born, okay? So don't judge me for something that I cannot control. You think I want to be like this? Well, I don't. You despise condiments. That is oddly specific, but I would say it is true for some. I do not like ketchup. I don't really see the appeal of that, but I like ranch, I like mayo, I like all the white sauces. I'm gonna just insert the underage emoji here. You try to be all badass and strong, but you're actually very emotional. <laughs> it's true. But you know, I would say that you can be both badass and emotional because complexity, layers, humans have them. You are actually a Sarah J Mass stan and you've been hiding it because you're ashamed of it. That is true, I actually have a Sarah J Mass book of my asshole right now. But seriously speaking, I've only read one book by Sarah J Mass so far and that was A Court of Thorns and Roses. Based on that, 
Not a fan. You haven't been in a relationship in a long time. Girl, it's been 84 fucking years since I've been in a relationship. I don't even remember what the touch of a man was like anymore. It's been many, many moons. There are cobwebs growing down there. The last assumption, will you be my girlfriend? That is actually not an assumption, but to counteract the previous assumption, yes. Let's just go ahead and get hitched and then I won't have any cobwebs anymore. That's the end. Thank you for sticking around if you did. I did not get to go through all of the assumptions obviously because we don't have enough time for that and I already know that this video is going to be fucking long. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to unsubscribe and goodbye. What the fuck is this? I hate myself. Bye. Going through, hey, it's a vibe. You can dance if you want to. Put your hands up in the air if you want to. Fuck a hater, you could be a fan if you want to. Someone looking at you from the side, what you gon' do? Hey, what's your name? Where you from? Where you stay? Who you know? What you trying to do today? I could take you.